Welcome to the barrel training video by Donkey Kong Genius. In this video I attempted to do a comprehensive analysis of the barrel board. It was my desire for both beginning and advanced players to be able to benefit from the video. However, I would recommend for newer players to try to focus on the simpler aspects of the video so that they can get through the game and achieve their first kill screen and then go back and try to memorize all of the different grouping techniques in the video. Since this video is so long I created a time index so that you can choose the topic that you wish to view and view and go to the the specific time in the video to view that section or uh, just to remember what you haven't seen so you can come back and you can watch the video in pieces. Running the boards is the simplest thing to do. Just try to get to the level as quick as possible. Starting at level 1, you can normally get up to the fourth girder by following this specific pattern. Being mindful of the barrels and uh, when to straight jump and when to jump over but just try to make your way through and just try to familiarize yourself with uh, how everything functions. One aspect of the barrel stage are these uphill positions. That is to stand uphill where the ladder meets the girder you're presently standing on. The reason being is because you can control barrels down these ladders and the barrels will proceed away from you once they hit the girder that you're on. So these are uphill positions. These are a few examples. There are more uh, than just the few that I'm showing. Also, uh, there are some safe spots or places where you would want to know for simple uh, barrel control and jumping barrels. And the top right yellow arrow uh, shows you a place where you can jump straight up all day long and never die while you wait for an opening to proceed up the small ladder and finish the level. Also, the other arrow that's uh, directly underneath the uh, broken ladder on the fifth girder, uh, you're standing a little to the right of this so that you can control barrels down the ladders to the right without influencing or controlling barrels uh, to come down the broken ladder and then down by your position. You can also straight jump uh, some barrels here as well. Here is the example of jumping in the safe spot. Uh, waiting for an opening on the right to proceed to the small ladder and to finish the board. Level 2 begins to get a little more difficult, uh, starting with this little jump here at the, f at the beginning. Uh, but you can usually make it up to the fourth girder pretty easily. But once again, being patient, just waiting for your openings. Um, no need to die for being impatient. And doing some of those straight jumps uh, while you're waiting for an opportunity. If for some, for some reason you don't feel uh, comfortable going, up the ladder. You can wait, so there's no reason to die. Level 3 starts to get uh, the wild barrels that get thrown and can kill you. Even people who are playing uh, for a million uh, points uh, have the tendency to uh, skip the bottom hammer. Uh, and you can recognize in this portion how I'm controlling barrels, uh, how I did the jump right underneath the broken ladder where I showed you in the previous slide. And just controlling barrels out of your way and just trying to make it to the end. By the time you get to the fourth level, uh, you want to be mindful that uh, barrels are going to come down those ladders more often than they don't, particularly because you're running and you'll have to avoid these wild barrels, which I'll discuss in a moment. But uh, just as uh, we saw before, we'll want to control these barrels down the right, wait for our opening, and 
be cautious uh, just where we need to uh, jump up and control those barrels uh, try to make your time this is actually level 10 but uh, as you can see here, it functions the same as five. Just keep running, controlling barrels, and uh, being patient and making your way up to the top. Here's an example of grabbing a top hammer uh, when you're doing a top hammer only game as opposed to just running the boards. And we'll be going over top hammer uh, later. Um, and most players start by incorporating the top hammer in. The key in the early start is to be careful to proceed up to that third girder. You gotta wait for that barrel to come down. Also, as you are running to the ladder, don't worry about the wild barrel, you can just jump through it. DK's been whipping them barrels. Whipping them barrels. The drop barrel uh, starts off at the very beginning of the game, but we also see it uh, throughout the game as well. Uh, as you can see, the trajectory follows uh, just along the right side of the ladder. You can actually walk, c climb these ladders while this barrel is being thrown. Uh, so as long as you stay out of this range when it's being dropped, you will survive. Though sometimes these drop barrels will hit a girder and bounce. It happens so rarely that you normally don't have to worry about it. The Type 1 weld barrel is usually found during level 1 and uh, during the first part of level 2. Uh, they don't move around too much. Um, they don't have a tendency to move toward or away from you. Uh, you just need to make sure that uh, you can navigate around them. Type 2 barrels, the wild barrels, are the most notorious. Uh, they are absolutely crazy and uh, but there is a reason and rhyme to their movements and what you can do to survive. Um, for the most part, uh, just try to stay away, but uh, obviously um, sometimes even the best players get killed by these barrels. We're going to take a moment and analyze these Type 2 well barrels for just a moment. Uh, I wanted to point out on this example here that uh, the position of the barrel in relation to the position of Mario on the board, the barrel when it is released and when it bounces off a girder will always move in that direction uh, where Mario is. And, and, and in this case it continues to move right until this time when it, I am on the left and it can take any number of these trajectories. So I jump over just in case. Type 3 weld barrels um, really do not need to be covered because we're going to see them throughout the entirety of the video. One of the most important things to know about the weld barrels has to do with the internal difficulty changes in the game. That is, what type of wild barrel is going to be thrown when really depends on what level you are and how long you've been on that level. For example, on level 2, you're going to get to type 2 wild barrels at about 34 seconds. Also, this internal difficulty change also has to do with barrel control. So, for example, in level 1, you control barrels about 25% of the time, but about 34 seconds in, you are... Uh, having a little more uh, help with that. So for example, if you are waiting to use the bottom hammer on level 1, waiting about around the time of 3200 um, on the bonus around 33-34 seconds in, you will have a 25% increased chance of controlling barrels and hitting them with the hammer. Another idea to keep in mind is Level 5 functionality. At what point on certain levels will it function just like level 5 for grouping purposes? Well, level 2 is around 1200, level 3 around 3500, and level 4 is around 6000. Um, 
which is 33, 63, 99 respectively. Grouping is kind of the heart of the barrel stage. It's what makes it great. Being able to anticipate uh, barrel formations, being able to uh, have the board sight to see uh, potential um, grouping possibilities. Um, now, most people who are playing the barrel board and practice for fun is going to get a lot out of this. People who are point pressing is going to get a lot out of this. But hopefully even newer players will be able to absorb something that will be useful to them in their games. Particularly, in, um, grouping is also a way of simplifying the board and being able to control where the barrels are going to be so that you can jump them safely. So for newer players to be able to learn some of these things, may be able to survive situations they may not, uh, they may not have survived or would not have survived if they had not known some of this information. Being aware of the location of the barrels is perhaps the most important point in any kind of grouping, uh, particularly in watching the, the, the wild barrels and being able to maneuver just right so that you can um, snag some extra points uh, with just a simple barrel jump. So being mindful of that and being able to snag those extra points. The idea of double barrel control is nothing more than seeing already grouped barrels on the girder above you and controlling them both down in the same formation so that you can jump them. When Mario jumps up, there's a very narrow hitbox under him. Uh, where the game searches for a barrel to award you points. But when you jump up and you press right or left, then it expands that hitbox to this larger uh, rectangle and uh, you'll be awarded more points because the game searches uh, a larger area. And here's an example of a jump where I pull this off. Second girder grouping is normally used when you are either waiting at the bottom hammer or you are transitioning after the bottom hammer where you may be able to pull off um, a group before you transition. Instead of controlling the second barrel that is coming down, you allow it to pass the ladder and try to control the third down the, the ladder, sir ladder over by the hammer. Um, because as long as you have that second barrel fall off the edge, there are two different possibilities of grouping those two together. And this is one of those examples. This is a variation of the last grouping technique, and in case it does not work, you can still pull this one off. In this variation, as you can see, that second barrel does in fact go off the edge of the third girder like it did before, but this time, that third barrel doesn't go down the broken ladder uh, coming down to the third girder. It comes down the next ladder, and so you can group them this way as well.
In this variation, we see that the third barrel actually ends up coming down the middle ladder, coming down to the fourth girder. And so we were able to force both of these barrels down these two ladders at the exact, exact same time. Before I finish this variation, I wanted to show you exactly how things function with the first two barrels on the barrel level. The first one will always come down every single ladder it hits. The reason being is there's something in the code where as long as the oil drum is not lit, the barrel is going to take every single ladder that it encounters. Likewise, the second barrel takes most of the ladders until it gets down to the third girder. Then it may choose not to go past the, 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 the middle ladder there coming down to the second girder. In these variations that I'm showing you, the second barrel will pass the first ladder and then we'll be either letting it fall off the edge, if it will, or controlling it down the, the small ladder on the far end. So that brings us back to this point where we are controlling both these barrels down these two ladders at the same time. These upcoming grouping techniques are used when Mario is standing between the two ladders on the second girder. Usually when you are in transition after you have finished with the lower hammer. This is pretty much similar to the variation we've just seen except for we're between the two ladders and we're moving right, left, and right again uh, with a small little dance to get those two down these two ladders at the same time so they can be grouped and so that we can jump up in the air, press left to expand the hitbox and be able to get the group. Once again, this is pretty much the second variation that we, we saw, except for, in this case, uh, you're standing between the two ladders. The key to this variation is that we can get these two barrels down, these two ladders down to the third girder at the same time. When we see that, then we can pull off this maneuver and down by the ladder. We will encounter this barrel formation when we get to the third girder grouping. But if you're on the second girder and you see this formation, then you can force grouping down on the second girder. So this barrel formation here can be forced into a group both on the third and the second girder. This is the second girder variation. And this is the third girder variation of this barrel formation, where we see the barrel coming down on the left from the fifth to the fourth, and we see a barrel that is bypassing the ladder and falling off the fourth down to the third.
And this is the same technique, but with an added bonus. And this is the other variation of that same barrel formation, except for in this case, the barrel is rolling off the fifth onto the fourth, but the one that's on the fourth is coming down the ladder to the third. In this variation, we basically have a barrel come down the smaller ladder and an oncoming barrel on the fourth girder. You can group these here at the middle ladder. In this variation, we have two barrels that are sitting at the top of these ladders on the fifth girder. One comes down, then allow everything just to roll as it does, and then you can group them together at the middle ladder. This is a method for taking two normally spaced barrels and filtering down the right side. In this variation, you see that we are doing the controlling on the far right side as we had just done, except for we see a barrel that is coming down uh, Kong's broken ladder. We are already familiar with this formation, which we had just seen. Um, but we're going to incorporate this grouping technique along with the um, example that I just shared. So this is the exact same formation except for we had filtered those two barrels on the far right all the way down. This example basically shows that when you have a barrel at the bottom of the middle ladder on the fourth girder and a barrel at the very top of the sixth girder, that that barrel can be controlled down a broken ladder and grouped. With some of these triple variations, it can be difficult to recognize how you may be able to pull this off and be able to identify a certain barrel formation. Um, but in this example, you can see that you have two barrels that are going to be moving to the right that you can easily group, and you're basically trying to pull in the one on the fifth girder down into the group. This is basically a variation of what we just saw, being able to group these two barrels on the fourth girder over to the right and be able to pull uh, another barrel down from the top down into the mix. This is another example of basically the same idea when we have a barrel that's sitting at the top of this broken ladder on the left and a barrel that's sitting at the bottom of the broken ladder on the right we can, we can control those and group them in the middle.
With many of these grouping possibilities, we have a barrel formation that we can see. In this variation, we see three barrels sitting at the top of their respective ladder. And the, the goal is to basically have uh, the one in the far left and the far right roll off their respective girders and then to basically control these two and then the right down their respective ladders so that we can get this formation working over on the right. What I like about this variation and why I call it a bookend is because this broken ladder on the far right, as long as you have a barrel sitting at the top and a barrel sitting at the bottom serving as bookends, then you can pull off this maneuver uh, in order to group them down by the bottom of the middle ladder on the third girder. There are a lot of variations that look very similar to others that function basically the same. We have a barrel falling off the fifth girder. We have one falling off the fourth girder. Those two, as long as they're in proximity of falling off their respective girders, we can group them in the middle down at the bottom of the middle ladder on the third girder. In this variation, we see a barrel falling off the fifth, and we see one sitting down at the bottom of this ladder on the fourth. Uh, you do a little dance in the middle, and you should be able to group them over by the broken ladder on the left. I actually forced this example so that you can see uh, the benefits of going up the broken ladder in case of unjumpable barrel formations. In this fourth girder grouping technique, we're basically controlling these two barrels down these two ladders at the same time. Here we just see a variation of the two ladder technique. Uh, but the barrels are a little uh, off-center from where they were before. Much like the two-ladder technique, uh, having one coming down a ladder and one falling off the fifth girder can also be grouped as well. And this is a variation of what we just saw. Basically, as long as you have a barrel that's falling off the fifth, and you have a barrel which is within these blue boundaries here, whether Kong is about to release or it's already starting to come down the ladder, that can be grouped.
This barrel formation is referred to as the equilateral for apparent reasons. It seems to be formed shortly after a wild barrel is formed and then we have the uh, X space space X formation that occurs at the same time, which we'll see later on when we do con grouping. To take this formation one step backwards to see how does the formation occur, uh, we see Kong showing a barrel, and we also have a barrel on the fifth just underneath the ladder on the sixth. Once the barrel that Kong is holding is controlled down, we're going to see the equilateral formation occur. Then, once the two on the fifth pass their respective ladder, control everything down the ladder as you can and jump the triple. And as you see, while we're controlling these barrels down, we end up seeing the two barrel formation we saw earlier. But we also can see the barrel that's sitting behind it, and there's your bonus. I want to take a moment to explain this a little bit because the different formations or uh, grouping potentials that we see begin to uh, bleed into one another where we can see two different types of grouping occurring at the same time where we can triple something up. In this case you can see uh, one falling off the fifth and we have a barrel within that range as we discussed before. But another formation we need to be aware of which happens a lot is one falling off the fifth and having a barrel oncoming on the same girder over by the broken ladder. And just like in some of the other examples, sometimes there's a range where this barrel can be over by the broken ladder. It can be directly over top of it or it can be just slightly to the left. suppose we could refer to this as like a right triangle because you get these two barrels that are uh, directly on top of uh, or below one another there. Uh, but once again, we kind of see this far end um, ladder position where in this case, uh, instead of falling off the fifth and having um, the barrel to the broken ladder slightly to the left of the broken ladder, uh, we have uh, something that's very s similar in that it's by the top of the broken ladder and we have the one that's not falling off the, the end but it's closer to the top of the ladder but uh, once again we have this extra barrel here that's being shown that we can throw into the mix and then we can group together In this formation, we can see the far end positions with uh, the barrels over by their respective ladders here on the fifth. But this time, instead of um, having this barrel come down with two short city spaced uh, barrels, uh, we're going to let it go off the end. We're going to group to the left, and then we're going to group to the right and go down and jump. I refer to this as the three ladder variation because uh, we're going to be mindful of being able to do this grouping in the left with these barrels on top of the respective ladders on the fifth and then we have this other barrel that's sitting at the very bottom of the ladder on the sixth. 
So another way of gauging the progression of this is seeing a barrel at the bottom of the small ladder on the fourth and seeing a barrel near the top of the small ladder on the sixth. And of course, this also works if you're just trying to group two to the right as well. Just knowing their positions, um, allowing it to go over the edge on the sixth, and then you can control it down and group it. This is basically the same thing we just saw, except for, as mentioned before, you can have a little play in uh, having this blue barrel here either sitting at the top of this ladder or if it's falling off the fifth. This is uh, a rather interesting and easy recognizable formation because it starts off with two barrels coming down the respective ladders from the sixth the girder. Now it's also important to know in this variation that once these two barrels come down, we're going to see a pause in Donkey Kong's behavior. Now we're already familiar with having a barrel sitting at the bottom of the short ladder on the fourth girder, but in this case we don't have a barrel that's sitting at the top of the short ladder on the sixth girder and then allowing it to go over the side. Because the barrel is sitting at the bottom of the ladder on the sixth girder, we need to shortcut it a little bit, uh, have it come down the small ladder, and then we can group it. Taking this technique one step further, we have a barrel sitting at the bottom of the middle ladder on the fourth, and we see once again a barrel sitting at the top of the short ladder on the sixth. At that point, we know that we can group this at the bottom of the broken ladder on the right. So we can see when these two barrels came down their respective ladders from the sixth, we're going to make sure the first one that comes down the Kong's broken ladder falls off the fifth girder, and the second one is uh, forced down the small ladder. Once again, we see these two barrels falling down their respective ladders from the sixth, but this variation does not have a pause in Kong's routine. So around the time that the first barrel hits the small ladder on the left, uh, we see that we now have this formation, once again, where we get two barrels coming down two ladders at the same time. As with uh, the second and third girder, spend some time maybe with some safe states and just kind of camp on a particular girder that you're practicing these different formations on just to see what you can pull off, uh, what you feel comfortable with. Um, just try to survive and group and become familiar and comfortable with being there uh, because it's very important for not only grouping but survival purposes as well.
Just as we saw on the third girder, there's also an escape ladder on the fourth. Though if it's at all possible, the wall jump escape is preferred. Thank you for watching part one of the barrel training video. Please view part two. Also, please view my kill screen games and other training videos for more learning opportunities. Also, please like this video and subscribe to Donkey Kong Genius and view me on Twitch at clchambers00. Links are provided in the description.